Hello science friends, Mr. Paquette here. I'm going to show you how to correctly use a triple beam balance today. So here's my triple beam balance. It's used for measuring mass and I have a couple of important parts that I want to show you. First I've got the zero mark over here, the riders, the pan, the adjustment knob, and the rider bars. So let me, first thing we have to do is make sure that your triple beam balance is set on a level surface. If you don't have a level surface, you're not going to get a correct reading out of it. Second thing you want to do is if this has been sitting in a classroom for a long time, you want to dust it off because that tenth of a gram of dust may affect your reading and this is a very precise instrument. So after I've moved all the riders to the left, cleared off the pan, I next want to check and make sure that the zero marker is reading on the line correctly. And as this is settling and bobbing up and down, I want to make sure that it is exactly on the line. So the adjustment knob over here is a counterweight that goes in and out as you twist it. So I'm pretty sure this one I've already zeroed correctly, otherwise I would have to fiddle with the knob a little bit to make sure that it's correct. So now that I've got it set up correctly, I'm going to take the object that I want to find the mass of and set it on the pan. I have three different riders that I'm going to slide. The largest one is the hundreds. Now notice that there are notches in the rider bars and I have to make sure that my riders fall into the notches and you can feel it and hear it when you use one in real person. So I just moved it to 100 and notice that the pointer did not go down. That means that my apple has a mass greater than 100 grams. I move it to 200. It still hasn't gone down, so I know that it's more than 200 grams. Now, 300, it went down. So what that tells me is the correct mass is somewhere between 200 and 300. So I'm going to back it up to 200 and make sure it's in the notch. And now I'm going to switch to my tens rider. So is it 200? 10, it's greater than 210, but I saw this move a little bit, so I'm going to move it 10 more. Oh, 220, that went down, so that tells me that my correct mass is somewhere between 210 and 220, so I'm going to back it up to 210, and then I'm going to move to the other side of the camera here to do the fine adjustment. Now right here is where I've learned that students have the most difficulty, right? They know the hundreds, they know the tens, but for the ones, notice that there are smaller increments between each whole number. That means that this is going to read holes and a decimal to a tenth. So if I scoot here, that's only a point 0.1. Halfway to 1 is point 0.5. If it were right here, that would be 200 plus 10 plus 1 or 211 but you can see my zero pointer is not quite there yet so I'm going to keep sliding this over very gently and my goal is to get that line exactly lined up which looks like I'm really really close right now I think that's actually just about it and don't force it to stop swaying up and down you have to wait for it I may have gone a little too much. Back it up just a little bit. And now I have to read it. So 200 plus 10. Now this is where students get confused. They see the last number and they think, oftentimes, notice that the larger notch in the middle between 1 and 2 is the 5. Some people think that this is reading 17. That is not correct. This front rider is at 1.7. So I have to add up these numbers. 200 plus 10 plus 1.7 gives me a correct reading that the mass of this apple is 211.7 grams. And that's it guys. Thank you for watching. Leave me a comment if you have any questions and have a great day.